Well, this is probably the biggest game I'll ever play in my life. Well, it's uh, a dream come true, really, for me. Forty-five years since that epic Bird vs. Magic championship game that really changed college basketball on television and changed the sport in many ways, and at least for a brief fleeting moment, put Indiana State on the map. Sycamores hadn't been ranked since 1979 until this week when Josh Schertz had his Sycamores in the top 25, and then they promptly went out as a 17-point favorite at home against Illinois State and face-planted. But among all of the coaches in the country, perhaps no one is more well-suited than Josh Schertz to understand that a catastrophic face-plant at home does not define how your future is going to unfold. Chris Connolly has the story. When I drive in, when I do self-reflect, I think how lucky I am to be able to do something that I absolutely love doing. Right the floor, Joe. And don't tell anybody, but would do for free to coach basketball. Bro, break, but let's go, Thunder. Just think about how fortunate I've been. Most coaches are basketball lifers, gym rats who grow up with the game in their veins. Not Indiana State head coach Josh Schertz. Good, good, good. All right, let's go three on three, Shell. Growing up on New York's Long Island, he had one singular focus. It was not basketball. Tennis. As a 12 and under, I was like number one in the state of New York and uh, was in the top 100 in the country. It was sponsored by Prince, a you know, tennis company. They'd send him shoes and bags and rackets with his name on it. Urged on by his father, Paul, the family moved to Florida to get Josh the best coaching on his road to tennis success. There was one problem. I got progressively worse. I was 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, at 12, and I was like 5'6", at 14. I got to a point where I felt like I was done. You know, it was having a negative impact on my mental health and just my life in general. At 15, he quit. Josh's decision did not sit well with his hard-driving dad. If I wasn't going to play and I was going to quit, I couldn't stay there. Basically, you know, couldn't live there anymore. It wasn't as onerous as it may seem. He needed a break from me. I, you know, I was okay with it. I found him to be impossible. And my grandfather stepped in and gave me like a steady place to live with he and my grandmother. One year later, he picked up a new ball, a basketball. Thrilled to be part of a team sport, Josh became a voracious student of the game. I never really played before. I just started working by myself. And then eventually I got into where I had to learn the rules of the game, and then I started playing pickup games at the Jewish Community Center and at the park. The hand-eye coordination tennis had given him paid off. Josh got good in a hurry, and a junior college recruiter took note. When County College of Morris in New Jersey took a chance on him, it changed the course of his life. In no way, shape, or form, no matter how good an athlete he was, did it seem conceivable to me that he could be on a basketball court. I was like, no, I'm actually playing. And he could not fathom that 5'8 Jewish kid who'd never really played basketball was going to play college basketball. There'd be three junior college stops in all, but coaching became his passion. He'd start with an entry level gig at FAU and later earn respect as a top recruiter. In 2008, he'd be hired as head coach by Lincoln Memorial University in Tennessee. The Division II team had had just two winning seasons since 1999. We were going to be a development program, uh, not just as a player development, but personal development, academic development. We're going to be a program grounded in work. Nobody was going to work harder than us. Schertz built a Division II powerhouse. The rail splitters posted 11 straight 20 win seasons, made 10 NCAA Division II tournament appearances, and two Final Fours. Our highest point was probably the 32-game win streak we had. Cutting nets down with the team you love, that's probably one of the greatest moments I ever had at LMU. 12 years of success saw the kid from Montauk be summoned to Terre Haute in 2021. 
the 26th head coach in the history of Indiana State. I knew they had, they'd been in the national championship. I knew that Larry Bird played here. I knew that John Wooden coached here. I knew there was a history tradition. Now in his third year with the Sycamores, Coach Schertz has his team on top of the Missouri Valley Conference, ranked for the first time since Larry Bird was on campus 45 years ago. Indiana State ranked 23rd in the nation. We're not finished yet, obviously. The end goal wasn't to reach the top 25, it was to win championships. And so we've accomplished a lot so far this season, but I feel like we still have more to get done. Just incredibly proud. I know we have a, a special group. I'm so happy for them. Uh, these kids have come in and they've poured their heart and soul into this and to, to put themselves in this position. They're in position to win the conference, perhaps go to the NCAA tournament. The Sycamores will try to get back on the right track on the road against Southern Illinois.